Oh, hi there. Welcome back. I found a pattern that I want to knit up. Do I run to my local yarn shop and grab my keys and go because I want to make it just right? Are you one of those people? Hang on now a second. Let me tell you why you shouldn't. All right, I'm back and I've got yarn and stuff on. So why do I say that you shouldn't just run off to your local yarn shop and buy that yarn just because that designer made it in that yarn? Most designers work with other manufacturers and they get the yarn for free. It's like a publicity thing, not only for the designer, but also the yarn company. So sometimes the yarn is not complimentary for that project. And in a few episodes back, I mentioned that some designers get it right. And I wanna share with you some parts of a pattern. I'm not gonna go into full detail today with it, but it's on Ravelry. It is a free download. It's called the Magic Custom Fit Raglan Sweater. And it's by Danielle White. This is her version. And you can go grab it and I'll wait for you. Good. You got your copy of the pattern? It is pretty lengthy and you're like looking at it and I told you last time that the pattern that I'm going to be using is like a fill in the blank. So this is the pattern, the Magic Custom Raglan Sweater. Now, on the first page, like I said, this has been modified. The original form goes back to, I want to say it's been in Threads Magazine in 1988, and that designer got the idea from another book that was also published from 1940, 1961, and 1966. So this is not new people. This has been around, this type of sweater has been around for eons. Now under the yarn, this is what I meant by some designers get it right. Natural fibers will last longer and hold up better. So if you're gonna take the time to knit something or create something, even if it's crochet, Yarn choice, it has to be your top priority, not just because some designer recommended it or not because, oh, I like that color. You can always find colors in different, various forms of fiber. You just got to look for it. And going on and on, it's like natural fibers also look better, retain their shape. And it goes into, and a lot of people are alpaca lovers. And alpaca just drapes. It just, it gets bulky at times and it just hangs. So if you want to look like a tent or a tablecloth that you're wearing just a sheet or something like that over your body, then go for it. But <clears throat> something that needs to retain its shape, that's why natural fibers such as wool, such as sticky wool. And did you know a certain fact that Non-superwash wool is actually warmer than a superwash wool. So there's your fun fact for Friday. So, and this pattern also, like I mentioned in the last one, if you go to page two, gives you all the dimensions, all like normal, like chest, neck, circumference, how far your raglan should be down to your armpit, sleeve length, wrist sizes, and that's why swatching in the round, like mimicking in the round, and I showed you this before, where you just slide your needles back, your work, and have your front of your work, and leave a tail, and just knit along, and do it just like that, like a typewriter. So gauge matters a lot. 
especially when you're trying to figure out a pattern, or customize it for yourself. So, moving along, page three goes into finding your swatch and your gauge, and to find out how many stitches that you're going to need to place for your neck so you can get it actually over your head. But if you skip to, let's go here, page number seven of this pattern, there's different variations for different like v-necks and stuff like that that you can figure out, you know, if you're going to be going that advanced. I'm not doing that advanced. I showed you last time I'm going to do that rolled collar look. I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to make the, the neckline bigger. I will not be doing any um, short rows at the back of the neck as this pattern calls for short rows as well. And it's, some people say it's a better fit, but, and you can also get a smaller neckline over your, but I would rather a boat neck or something more relaxed fitting for this sweater that I'm going to be doing now. So once you get your gauge and your swatch, then you can, you know, neck circumference if you want 16 inches, 20 inches, you can also look at other free patterns out there and gauge it on that. If your gauge is close to that for fingering weight yarn, there's a ton of fingering weight yarn patterns out there. But I'm making my own. So if we move to page four, and if you look on page five, that's all for your short rows. But there is a note on page five that this pattern makes for bulkier, bigger sleeves. So if you're a female, you would want to size them down. So based off of page four, and you're like looking at this, it's like your total number of neck stitches times point this and point that, you know, will give you how many stitches you need. And how many stitches per sleeve, how many stitches for front and back, and the other sleeve, and how to divide them up and place your markers to make this pattern. So knowing on page five that this pattern makes for bulkier sleeves, and I'm a female and this sweater is going to be for me, I'm not going to do that. So I did reference a few other patterns out there, and I'm going to do, instead of a third and a third for the front and back, and a quarter and a quarter, because that seems a lot. So 50% of your stitches would be for sleeves. That's not going to work for a female. Unless I was a bodybuilder or something, that might work, but no, I'm not doing that. So my recommendation is 70-30. 70% 70 70 of your stitches would be front and back. 30% then would be your sleeve stitches. So say if I'm going to cast on, I'm just throwing it out there, an even number, 200 stitches. So 70% of those 200 stitches, I would divide evenly or round up to make it an even number of stitches for front and back. And then the remaining would be the start of the shoulder into the arms, which will end up being my sleeves because of how a raglan is shaped. So this is just the start. I haven't got my gauge correct yet. Um, I think this is too tight. And that's a size three needle. Size four needle, I cast it on and I'm playing with the Knitter's Pride needles. And Nikki was over yesterday and she agrees with me. There's nothing wrong with these needles, but the cords need to loosen up. And I think I'm gonna try her little trick because she's an RN and they used to, for like suctioning, some of the plastics were really the tubing. They would place it in hot water to try to relax it. 
but I kept playing with it yesterday and I think I got them because they keep curling up and they're just getting annoying and it would take me forever to knit with something that works like this so and this gauge seems a little bit too wide I'm not sure if what's going on there but I'm going to take this stuff off try to dip these needles because if not I'm not going to be knitting this sweater on these new needles even though I like them I like the feel of them you know some of the joints are it is what it is but these cords I won't be able to show you a sweater and the progress if it curls up like this. It's not going to work. It's not going to lay flat. So with that being said, if you're going to knit along with me, like I said, I'm in the beginning stages. I'm trying to find the right gauge. I did hand dye my yarn in my sticky wool. And yes, it is a green with a little bit of blue. I will be carrying my skeins down through. And the reason being is if you're going to use a hand dyed or hand painted yarn, carry your yarn down through. And I'll show you how I do it once I get to that point. So that way here you're not making stripes. So say if I use just one skein and I got to here. And if you've been following along, I dye yarn. No, dye runs. It's this is wet when we dye it, and the dye is liquid as well. So the dye runs, so not every skein is exact. So by carrying my yarn in my different skeins, I can get a more even look. Instead of, you might not see it visually, but once you take a photo of it, you can see like there's a line or demarcation where the next skein started and I don't want that look so I'd rather have it variegated throughout and use up all of my skeins of yarn simultaneously just by carrying it through and I'll probably carry it down one of the raglans on the inside so because it's not going to be that visible inside of a crease there until I get to the bottom and I'll probably do the same for the sleeves depending on how much yarn I've used up and I based off my amount of yarn off of quite a few patterns and it's just an approximate and anywhere I saw from 13 to 1400 yards a fingering weight yarn will make the size that I'm making so of course I kind of went in between. I do have more yarn. I can dye more. But again, these are already dyed. I have three of them ready. And I'm close to, I'm like at 1357 or some something like that. So I'm like right in between because I'm not sure if I want full length sleeves yet. I might just want crop sleeves on this sweater. So I can wear it during the spring here because it's still chilly. and. It's actually raining out there right now. So just food for thought. Don't run out there. This pattern is awesome. It's got an average rating of 4.3 from 81 votes. Like I said, if you don't understand it, just hang in there. I'll go in more depth of the 70-30 and how I'm putting mine together. But like I said, I don't want the big sleeves. So the third and third and the quarter and quarter is not going to work. And like I said, I'm making it simple so I'm not even focusing on the right side of page four. And it should be simple. I'll show you what my increases are because there's so many ways of doing increases. And um, see what kind of patterns we can come up with for the raglan here. And that's why I always keep saying you guys are the designer. Don't just follow something. Think outside of the box. Make it your own. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up so I know that you love this kind of content. As always, subscribe if you're not. And hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you in the next one. 
Do 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 do.